So, welcome to the seventh video in this PBX Showcase series. Um, I've had a lot of new developments in my PBX system recently, so I thought this would be a great opportunity to make another video. So, um, first off, I wanted to start off with my PBXs themselves. I still have this 824 PBX right here, and I still have this 308 PBX right here, but the 308 PBX I've actually decommissioned for the time being. And the reason why is actually um, it required six 14-foot phone cables to daisy chain this PBX with this PBX. I could call from this PBX to that PBX and that PBX to this PBX. And if you think about it, that's about um, a little bit over 80 feet of phone cables running behind my desk. Um, so it was, you know, not pleasant and not necessary because um, each of these PBXs can support eight extensions. And I had five or six extensions on this PBX and two, only two extensions on this PBX. So it really wasn't necessary. It, it really just wasn't worth it. Um, there's nothing wrong with the PBX. I've just taken it out of service for the time being. Um, I've also um, redone my extensions. You'll notice that the phones are now in slightly different places themselves. So obviously this is still 101, it's still the operator console, it has to be. And I've got it set now so that you can see the caller ID, and right now it's just showing the date and time, it's just, it's kind of convenient. I have a clock right here, so I don't actually use the clock on there, but um, you can at least see the display now, you couldn't really see it before. Um, that phone right there used to be extension 102, it's not even connected to the PBX anymore, but I'll explain that in a little bit. Um, so I don't have anything connected to extension 102 or extension 103. Um, this is now extension 104. We have extension 105 here. This used to be 11 on the other PBX. Extension 106 right here. We have extension 107 right here. And this used to be 15 on the other PBX. And before it was 105 on this PBX. Now this is extension 108 on this PBX. And this is a Cortelco 2500 phone. And this is actually not connected to my PBX system right now. So I won't get into that in detail right now. So quite recently, actually, I got around to doing some PBX programming with this handset here. You have to use this um, PT handset or proprietary telephone handset to program the PBX. Um, it's, it's not too complicated once you get the hang, out of, hang of it, but it was, it was kind of a pain to figure out at first, you know, how to program the PBX, which buttons do what in the PBX and whatnot. Um, but I got around to changing the ring setting, and you'll notice that in my previous videos, you heard the UK style ring or the double ring that's common in the United Kingdom. I don't know if it's common in other countries, but I know it's common in the United Kingdom. And here in the United States, um, ring cadences are just a single ring for two seconds, off for four seconds, on again for two seconds, off for four seconds. So I've changed it to a more American ring style. It's a single ring as opposed to the double ring. The reason that they have the double ring for um, internal extension calling is so you can distinguish if another extension is calling you or if you're getting a call from an outside line. Um, that being said, right, this isn't actually, you know, hooked up to a landline, for instance. So, um, you know, I'm not actually expecting um, that many, if any, calls on here, so um, I don't really need to be able to distinguish calls. So I can demonstrate that here. I'll just dial this phone from this phone, and you can hear that it is indeed the single ring. So you can hear that it is indeed the single ring that you would typically hear um, with the regular United States landline. So it's, uh, I guess, more realistic to uh, the environment that it's actually being used in now. So now on to uh, some of the bigger developments that I'm going to talk about in this video. So you'll see that there's new nifty little device here. It's actually pretty small. It might look a little bit bigger on camera than it really is, but it's actually pretty small. I'm talking about this thing right here with the three green lights that you can see right now. And that is a Cisco Linksys PAP2T. 
and it's a pretty popular analog telephone adapter. And what it does is that um, you plug an analog telephone or a tel analog telephone system into it, and that allows you to use it with um, voice over IP, for instance. So a lot of homes right now, instead of having traditional landlines, they get these voice over IP services, and they use these to, I guess, um, serve as kind of a, a bridge between the analog and the digital phone system. Um, so usually the reason people do this is because voice over IP services are cheaper. Um, I'm still a fan of the traditional landline services, even though this isn't hooked up to one right now, just because, um, you know, landlines offer far better call quality and reliability. Um, you'll have people on both sides, but I'm more of a traditional analog landline guy. So you might be asking why I have this Linksys PAP2T analog telephone adapter in that case. And the reason is, recently I found out about a private telephone network for switching systems and collectors called CNET. That's C asterisk net. And what it is, is a, it's basically a private telephone network Right, um, the PSTN is obviously the largest telephone network, but um, you know, a telephone network can be any size, right? Technically, this right here is a telephone network, even with just um, several telephones. So, CNET is a private telephone network for um, connecting switching systems. I believe it began in the early 2000s when um, a lot of telephone hobbyists wanted to collect their large um, private central offices, actually, and um, switching systems, um, you know, lots of fun. Um, and they wanted to connect them together, right, so they could use them. And you can't do that with the PSTN, obviously. So they utilized voice over IP, which has become more reliable in recent years, especially. It's definitely not anywhere close to providing the quality ser of service as a traditional landline. But it's, it's good enough for the needs of, you know, playing around, which is basically what CNET is for, right? Um, I mean, people use it to talk to other telephone collectors, but mostly it's a lot of fun, right? You know, dialing into these telephone systems and doing quirky stuff. I mean, if you think of, you know, freaking in the late 50s, early 60s, it's, it's not exactly like that, but it's, it's more along hobbyist lines um, like freaking was. So it was actually just yesterday that I got this PAP2T up and running. Um, so now I'm, I'm hooked into CNET, and you might ask, well, what does that mean? So I, I, mean, I already talked a little bit about what CNET is used for, but basically a lot of telephone collectors talk to each other this way, right? And if you don't have unlimited long distance on your landline, um, you can talk to other people using CNET and avoid paying for long distance. So it's, it's kind of neat that way. Again, it's a private network. Um, just a few more details about CNET itself. Um, so there's an inbound number, there's a few inbound numbers actually, a few inbound gateways from the PSTN to CNET, and there's no outbounds from CNET to the PSTN or other networks yet. Well, actually there might be some outbounds to other networks, but not the PSTN um, right now. So basically you can get into CNET from the PSTN, but right now you can't get out um, for obvious reasons. So... But anyways, it's really exciting having this connected now because instead of just having this PBX and this PBX here in isolation, you know, now I can actually use the telephones I have the way they were meant to be, right? You know, you actually, you know, telephone means far sound, right? So instead of doing near sound, which is what I've been doing in my video so far, I can actually do far sound, which is what Alexander Graham Bell intended people to do. So with CNET... Most people who have a lot of telephones or a lot of telephone switching equipment usually are running their own server with Asterix PBX, I believe, and that functions basically as the voice over IP equipment of a telephone central office. It's basically a telephone server that their equipment is hooked up to, and that communicates with other Asterix PBX servers um, that are, you know, um, connected to the CNET network over the internet. That's what voice over IP is all about really. So um, you might ask, well, where's your Asterix PBX server? And the answer is, I don't have one. And the reason is, um, well, a couple reasons, actually. First of all, setting up your own server requires more work, obviously. And it's it's not that the, the work wouldn't be worth it, but that also requires, you know, opening up ports on your router and other things that some people 
don't want to go to or maybe they want to ease their way into it. And a good way to ease your way into it is to find someone to host you. And what that means is finding someone else on CNET who has their own server running Asterix PBX. And what they basically do, it's kind of complicated to explain for the purposes of this video, but they basically, you know, host your, your, you know, your telephone equipment. And all you have to do is you have to configure some settings on the analog telephone adapter. And that allows you to connect to the services they're providing it. It gets you into CNET. It's all pretty transparent. And you can read more about it on the CNET website if you're really interested in how it works. But um, it's, it's pretty transparent, so I won't get into it any further here. So like I said earlier, the PAP2T is one of the more popular analog telephone adapters or ATAs out there. Um, and with the PAP2T, pulse dialing is not supported. And you might think that's a problem, and it is for some people. Um, and there are analog telephone adapters that do support pulse dialing, but those are not as easy to find and come by, and they're typically more expensive. Um, and for me, that's not a problem, even though you might think it is, since I have mostly rotary phones here. But this PBX here, actually that PBX too, but this is the only one being used right now, does pulse to tone conversion for outside lines. And so this PAP2T is actually only getting tones from the PBX, um, even when an outside call might be made from a rotary phone. So um, e if I didn't have the PBX, I would either need some sort of pulse to tone converter there. And, you know, some of those don't work and ones that do are expensive and hard to come by. Or you would need an analog telephone adapter that does support pulse dialing. So connected to the PAP2T, I have this modular line splitter. And on one side, I have this AT&T 100 phone connected to it. The reason I have this phone connected to it is, A, I don't like this phone, so that's why it's down on the floor. Um, I don't use it much. It is a touchtone phone, and you need to plug a touchtone phone directly into it, not a rotary phone if you choose to plug uh, a phone right, right into it. I don't need that line splitter there, but I've just chosen to put it there. And so this can do touch tone dialing. And I also have the ringer turned off. So if the PBX is turned off, um, I won't hear anything really when it rings, which I mean, depending on whether you view that as a pro or as a con, it's, it's you know, that's that's a personal decision. And obviously the other, the other end of that line splitter I have connected to the PBX. So I can either just directly use this telephone to make calls um, to CNET or I can use any of these other phones here. I just have to dial 9 or 83 specifically for an outside line and then that'll get me into the PAP2T. But if I'm on a call, for example, you know, even if I need it from this phone, um, the PBX has some security features. So I couldn't just pick up those phones, for example, and join in on the conversation by dialing 83 for that specific outside line. Because if you just dial a 9, it'll, it'll grab another line and I don't have any other lines connected. But even if you dial E3, you'll get a busy signal, and that's a security feature. But I could just pick up this phone and join in, since that's not connected to the PBX. It's, it's um, split into the, the PAP2T along with, the, um, along with this PBX here. So, just like that, this AT&T 100 phone here and all these other phones on that PBX are connected to CNET um, through that ATA. And actually, touching back on an earlier point, um, another reason that um, I've disconnected this PBX is, um, you know, if PBXs are chained together, you can't really easily get them to uh, um, connect to outside lines as well, actual outside lines. Um, there's ways to do it, but that becomes complicated. Then you have to remember which outside lines are, are going to what, and that just becomes a mess. So I didn't really need the 308 PBX connected, which is why it's disconnected. So also connected to the PAP2T, besides power, obviously it needs power, is this um, Ethernet cable here. And if we follow the Ethernet cable, you will see that it is connected to the router here. It's port number four. You can see that Ethernet port number four here is active. You'll notice the Wi-Fi is off as well. And with that, the analog telephone adapter is connected to the network 
and therefore can connect to the internet um, and be able to connect to my CNET host. And that in turn hooks me into CNET itself. So one last thing I want to go over is the CNET dialing scheme or numbering plan. You might ask, um, how is that relevant here? Well, it does help to know what the dialing plan is. You'll notice here, this is the PSTN numbering plan um, in the format that it's um, traditionally used technically. NPR, NXX, XX, XX. NPR is basically the area code. I believe that stands for numbering plan region or something like that. So in this case, one, one is just the trunk line. It stands for making a long distance call. Technically, that's not actually part of the number itself. But one, two, zero, two, four, five, six, one, four, one, four. And that, in this case, that's just the number for the White House. So if you want to call the White House and leave some comments at the switchboard, you can. This is the CNET um, numbering schema, dialing schema. And it's just one NXX, XXXX. It's basically the PSTN schema for North America, but without the NPR. The reason for that is, obviously, there's a lot of people connected to the PSTN, therefore a lot of numbers, and there's not a lot of people connected to CNET, relatively speaking. So there's no need for area codes with CNET. You just have NXX, which is basically the office code in both PSTN land and CNET land, and then XXXX. So here is an example of a number on CNET, and I've actually called this number before. It's just one three seven seven. 9901. And with CNET, um, I was talking before about people who are running their own asterisk PBX servers. And people who are doing that are likely to have more than a few numbers. So oftentimes they might reserve an entire office code. For example, they might have, they might own basically 377 and all the numbers in the 377 office code. Some people might just own a thousand numbers. So a tenth of the numbers in an office code. Um, right now, I'm being hosted by somebody else and I'm just assigned one number, and one number right now is all I need because I just have a PBX basically connected to it. So getting into the, the good stuff, so to speak, right now, you can see that the three lights on this um, analog telephone adapter, the PAP2T, are solidly lit. Now, if I take this receiver off hook, notice how that light right next to the phone one um, label is blinking. That means the phone is off hook. And if I use one of these phones, this one for example, if I dial 9, that'll get me to the PAP2T. You'll notice it's also blinking. And as soon as I hang the receiver off, you'll see that it stops blinking. It goes back to being solidly lit. So what I'm going to do in a moment is actually call myself through one of the PSTN inbounds to CNET so I can actually call my CNET number um, using Google Voice um, since I can't actually, if I call myself through CNET, I'll just get uh, a busy signal. But if I call myself this way, you can actually hear it ring. There's just two things I wanted to show you first. Um, first of all, this is the CNET website, um, a great place to either get started or just learn more about how it works. You'll see it's CKTS, cksinfo And if you click on the inbound portals, you'll get a list of numbers that um, can get into CNET from the PSTN. And the one I like to use is this one here. Um, these first two ones here are the primary ones, I think. Um, this one gives you a, a sort of introduction when you call. This one just gives you dial tone straight away so you can get right into CNET from the PSTN. So without, um, oh, also this other thing here, this is the configuration portal for the Linksys PAP2T. This is how you configure it. So there's different settings you go through here and um, there's all sorts of configuration options here that you, you get to play around with. Um, so this is the line I've configured. And um, you basically, um, configure this, and that's all you have to do. Um, you don't have to open any ports on your router. You just um, go into the admin console here and configure the PAP2T right from your computer. So now for calling ourselves, I'll just dial the inbound portal number. It's actually a very easy number to remember.
And you'll see we have dial tone now. You just dial the CNET number. So I'll do that. Oops, actually I started dialing the wrong number, so. Let me try that again. You wanna dial the right CNET number. I'm trying to dial myself. And we'll get dial tone shortly. This time I'll dial the right CNET number. And in a couple seconds, we should hear it ring. So you can hear we are calling ourselves through the inbound gateway. And um, after four rings, it stops. Um, I think it might go to some sort of voicemail system afterwards. Again, that's configured. Um, that's configured by your host, obviously. I don't, I don't, I'm not exactly sure what's going on here, but it rings four times, then I think it goes to voicemail. So but we we got to hear the PBX ring with all its phones connected and um called ourselves through that PAP2T. And you could hear that pretty much as soon as I finished dialing the number it started ringing up here. So it's actually pretty quick. And to give you an idea of what's going on, I think my host servers are somewhere in, I think the Southwest United States and I'm here in the Midwest. So as soon as I dial that number on that um, computer there, right? It was going through Google Voice to Google servers. Um, They're then hooked into the PSTN to that inbound number, which is then, um, dialing that CNET number, and that's going all the way to the host server in um, the Southwest United States. And that in turn is connected to my analog telephone adapter here in the Midwest. And all that communication took place in just um, a, a couple of split seconds. It was just pretty quick. You could hear it ringing even before we got to the staircase. So it's, it's pretty quick here and it's actually pretty cool. So uh, to wrap up this video, I'll finish with um, making some calls within CNET itself. This is just a sheet I scratched out a little while ago with some um, fun numbers to dial. Uh, I've called these a couple times. And um, that way you can experience um, making calls through CNET itself instead of just to CNET from a PSTN gateway. Um, most people are, are not going to be using gateways. You're just going to be making calls within CNET itself. So um, I'm going to use this telephone, which was over there. I've just got a long line cord so I can move it here. Um, and I'm using this telephone just because it has the G6 handset. So it's got the adjustable volume and I've made it as loud as possible. So that way you can hear. So I think first I'll start with um, um, the 377-9901. I'll probably just go in order here. And again, you have to dial one before it. That's the CNET um, numbering schema. So I'll dial a nine for outside line. And then one, three, seven, seven, nine, nine, zero, one. I'm actually gonna do that again so you can hear that PAP2T dial tone. You'll hear a few beeps for a few seconds and then you'll hear dial tone cut in after a couple seconds. And I'm assuming that's because of just the delay that it takes for the PAP2T to contact my host, which is after all, you know, probably more than a thousand miles away. So it, it does take a couple of seconds but it's, it's really not that big of an issue. So I'll dial nine again. Um, I could dial eight three specifically, but nine by default goes to CO3. You heard those um, stuttering tones for a few seconds and I'll dial one, three, seven, seven, nine, nine, zero, one. And it doesn't sound like anything is happening because there's about a 10 or 15 second delay between your last digit being dialed and the call actually going through. There we are. So you can see here I wrote down that was the two ring code pattern. This number actually, this is all part of a private central office 
um, in Oregon, actually. And he, um, the guy who owns it, he's got all sorts of cool switching equipment there. So this is actually switching equipment inside a facility in Oregon. And we're listening to a two ring code pattern now, so pretty cool stuff. So I can call this next number to get a busy tone, 377-9999. And I believe this is the old city busy tone, um, not the in modern busy tone or dial tone. These were all the, the pre-modern busy tones and dial tones um, were generated by actual, um, like it was, it was mechanically generated, electromechanically generated. And um, so from that era, no two dial tones were exactly the same, right? They they all had their own kind of personality. And a lot of people, especially phone freakers, they could tell what central office they were connected to based on the sound of the dial tone or the busy tone. And in those days, busy tone was just um, the dial tone interrupted at a certain rate. So um, this busy tone here isn't the traditional busy tone that we're used to nowadays. It's the old city busy tone generated um, actually electromechanically. So we're, we're going to dial that now. Nine for outside line. And we have dial tone now. Again, we have to wait about 10, 15 seconds. There you can hear the old city dial, busy tone, not dial tone, busy tone. Actually, this is technically the dial tone just being interrupted at a certain rate. So next we'll do this intercept announcement. So again, we have to wait 10, 15 seconds. I think if you're using a touch tone phone, you can press pound to make the call go through quicker, but obviously I don't have a pound. There we are. The number you have reached has been disconnected or is no longer in service. If you feel you have reached this recording in error, please check the number and dial again. And we have not reached this recording in error, actually, because that is the number we intended to reach the intercept announcement. So next we'll try this 1377-5122. And hopefully by now you're getting a feel for the type of stuff that's on Cena and just how cool it is to get hooked into it. I can see if I can use pound here to make it go through quicker. You can see that's a 120 IPM reorder tone. And I'll do one more. I'll just finish with 5266 or the standard ring. I don't know if the if pressing pound may go through any faster, so I'll just wait it out this time. There we are.
So right now you're listening to a ring signal that's being electromechanically generated in Oregon, actually. And these numbers here are all set up um, for people on CNET to play around with, so nobody's actually going to pick up. So I'll just hang up now. But hopefully this gives you an idea of some of what's on CNET. You can see there's there's even more numbers we can get to, and there's people have all sorts of switching equipment hooked up, from Western Electric, um, Automatic Electric, all sorts of um, telephone equipment manufacturers, and some people just have a standard phone hooked up just so they can talk to other people. It, it's it's really become quite diverse and um, branched out quite a bit from what the founders of CNET originally wanted it to do back in the early 2000s, and it's it's come a long way.